get out and feel more. Find out what the problems are. Take the pulse, so to speak. Especially at election time. Well, I've been mighty busy making our schools a better place to go to school. I haven't had time to go to school, too. Well, don't bother to apologize, Tom. We look forward to these visits of yours every four years. You know, you got yourself a whole new constituency this year. I was meaning to ask you about that. How many of these kids are old enough to vote? About 10%. Well, that's worth going after. Could make the difference in any election. How about those kids? They're seniors. And they've got parents. <laughs> Hi. Uh, boy, I'm Tom McWilliams, running for re-election to the Board of Education. Hi, how are you? Heavy. <laughs> Good to see you. How are things going around here? Anything we can do for you downtown? Well, some of our textbooks are a little out of date. Well, that's fundamentally a state problem, but we're pushing them on it. Don't forget me at the polls, boys. Tell your parents I was here. Tom McWilliams. <laughs> ah. Four more years. Well, at least we won't be here. Yeah, but others will. Tom McWilliams running for re-election to the school board. Tell your parents I was here. How are you, miss? Nice to see you. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Who's a good example of that era? Eugene V. Debs. Right, and what was one of the most interesting things about Debs' political career? Well, he was never elected to office, but most of his reforms eventually became law. That's right. We've got just the opposite. What do you mean? Tom McWilliams on the Board of Education. He never gets a good idea, but he always gets elected. He's here today shaking hands. He came up to me on campus and told me how pretty I was. Shoot, he didn't tell me that. <laughs> What'd you say to him? Well, I tried to talk to him about some of our textbooks, but he ducked it. You should have asked him why we don't have an open campus. Right. We should be allowed to come and go as we please. I mean, we're not children. Yeah, it's not fair. We can't get out, but they let McWilliams in. <laughs> <laughs> I get the idea. You know, it's a lot easier to be on the outside criticizing than it is to be on the inside trying to do something. But McWilliams isn't trying to do anything. What are you trying to do? No matter what we do, Mr. Dixon, nobody will listen to us. Yeah. Who's going to listen to a bunch of kids? Well, I guess you'll just have to suffer in silence. Hi, Pete. Oh, good morning. Hi. What are you putting up? Oh, just a little something I found in the newspaper. I heard about that. You know, that's inside a revolution. Well, a little revolution never hurt anybody. Let's get some coffee. Listen to this. 18-year-old elected to school board. An 18-year-old youth today became the youngest school board member in the history of the state of California. Hey, you're kidding. Where? Well, I guess it was in some small town up north, but still, he was elected and he was running against a bunch of adults. Hey, man, do you know what this means? It's like a question of time before we outnumber them. Then we can vote in anything we want. Yeah, Jason, but by that time, we'll be them. Yeah. I know there's a catch to it somewhere. I guess this is what Mr. Dixon had in mind the other day. He's got to be the one who put that up. Well, it sure wasn't that dude named Mac Williams. I thought it might give you an idea. But it wouldn't work here. That was a small town. This is a big city. Well, if what you're saying is you wouldn't win. You're probably right. Then what would be the point of running? Well, I think it might be a good platform to get your ideas across to the public. That's right. Eugene V. Debs never got elected. Well, isn't it if no candidate gets more than 50% of the vote, he's forced into a runoff election? For the next highest candidate. Well, if nothing else, we might be able to make sure McWilliams doesn't get 50% of the vote. Well, there are four other people filed to run, including Jack Hess. He's a good man. How old is he? 34, 35. Shoot, man, we got youth on our side. Well, you wouldn't be a bad candidate, Gary. Yeah, you'd be a good one. Well, we'd have to get signatures on a filing petition. So? And I think there's a filing fee. Well, it's not that much. You could probably raise it. And going out and getting the signatures would give us some indication of public reaction. That's right. Well, I've got some things to do. You really think we should try then, huh, Mr. Dixon? Well, that's strictly up to you. Oh, wait a minute, man. If it's so strictly up to us and he really doesn't care what we do, then how come he knew so much about it? Here he comes, Walt Whitman's foremost political strategist. Oh, not me. <laughs> Kids. 
You're doing pretty well, too. Look at the press they're getting. Community leaders hail entrance of 18-year-old into board race. Very good, very good. Wait a minute now, this is strange. I don't see any good wishes from Tom McWilliams. <laughs> How are they going to finance the campaign? Well, some of the parents offered to help. The kids told me this morning they were organizing a door-to-door -door campaign to raise money. Ron Homer has a whole set of graphs and charts. You know, he's broken this city down into more groupings than you can imagine. It seems like they're going about it in the right way. I think they're a little surprised at their own success. Maybe people are finally ready for a change in politics. Wouldn't it be something if they ever won? I wonder if we'd have a job they're exporting. Charge dirty tricks. Nobody, man. Why? Because someone just played one on us, ripped off our trash barrel. It won't do them no good. Why? Because I put all the paper through a shredder. Hey, Ronald. Hi, Bernie. How's everything coming? Oh, not bad, Bernie. But, well, ideally, the demographics call for an in-depth study of the entire city with particular attention to size, density, and distribution. Do you follow me? Oh, yeah. What's this? Well, that's a preliminary study based on past in-depth studies, but it isn't up-to-date in, in depth. Yeah, well, it looks nice. Yeah, but it's... Hey, Ronald, listen, you're a nice guy, you know? You know more about this stuff than I do. You might even be governor one day. But we just can't afford an in-depth study. What can we afford? Talk to a few people, ask a few questions. Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins, you sent 10,000 letterheads that read the committee to elect Gary Winter. Now, it's Gary Winters with an S. No, it's not my fault. I distinctly said Winters. All right, I admit, it was my fault about the wedding invitations, but this is an entirely different matter. Mr. C Collins, will you please be reasonable? Oh, hi, Pete. This is crazy, huh? Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> oh, Look, Mr. Jason. Collins, what if the letterhead read the committee to elect Mr. Collins? Now, how would you feel about that, hmm? Hmm? Look, to say as long as you don't have to pay for it is really not a fair answer. Doorbell. That's the secret password for today. Doorbell. You gotta keep on pushing them doorbell. Otherwise, people aren't gonna know what our message is. Uh, what's the message? But don't worry, Mr. Dixon. It's all right here. Our platform committee is meeting tonight to wrap up our positions, and tomorrow we have our first news conference. Yeah, we're gonna be on a TV station. Good. I'm impressed with the way you've got things going. Thanks. Yeah, I think we're gonna give Mr. McWilliams a run for the taxpayers' money. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Yeah, well, I know just how you feel, Tom. Yes, it must be very embarrassing. But what do you want me to do? I'm only the principal, Tom. I can't tell the boy not to run. They're laughing at you. Well, that's not very nice, is it? They shouldn't do that. Tom, you know what they say. Youth must be served. Oh, come on, Tom. Of course that isn't an endorsement. How am I going to vote? Tom, you're really getting desperate. Look, I want to watch the news. I'll call you back later, okay? Yes, all right. Bye-bye. Come in. It's almost time. Good, I wouldn't want to miss it. Me either. One of the Board of Education seats currently held by Tom McWilliams. He faces stiff competition from Jack Hess, a 35-year-old college professor from the area. But the most interesting challenger is Gary Winters, a senior at Walt Whitman High School. Here's part of an interview we recorded with young Winters earlier today after one of his rallies. For a long time now, the students of this city have been expressing their dissatisfaction with the quality of their education. Now that we've gained the vote and the right to hold office, we plan to do something about it. Well, your platform contains some pretty strong stuff. You indicate that, uh, well, that grades should be abolished. Right. They're old-fashioned and unfair. And you want the right to demonstrate on campus, regardless of classroom activity. The right to demonstrate peacefully is guaranteed by the Constitution. Yeah, but during class hours? If the issues are more important than their classwork, yes. And we also feel there should be no rules about attendance. Oh, you mean students shouldn't have to go to class unless they want to? It should be left up to their own consciences and what they feel they need. And you want the right to fire teachers? If the students feel that any teacher is incompetent, they should have the right to remove that teacher. 
strong demands. It'll be interesting to see how the voters respond. Now let's check the sports and then the weather. I think we've heard enough. More than enough. Well, you were right. What do you mean? We may not have jobs in the morning. We were getting campaign contributions of over $100 a day. That's ringing a lot of doorbells. Since our press conference, we've gotten exactly $8.75. And we've rung about the same number of doorbells. How's it going? Well, you want our public position or you want the facts? We're bombing out, man. Hey, listen, every campaign starts off with a lot of enthusiasm. There's bound to be a drop-off. Come on, it'll pick up again. I don't think so. Nobody likes our platform. They think we're dumb kids. In the paper this morning, it said we'd blown it for the next kid who wanted to run for office. We'll show him. We can't show everybody, Gary. We can't compromise our principles, either. It's what the kids want. Ronald took a poll at a bunch of the schools. Maybe he asked the wrong kids, man. I came as close as I could to a cross-section. There are some things that make me feel a little squirmy, like firing teachers, for instance. It doesn't mean we really want to fire them. We just want the right to. It doesn't mean we're going to do all those things. Ronald, where do we stand in the latest poll? Close to the bottom. How close? Closer than anybody else. What do you hear from the campaign? Nothing. I've been working for Jack Hess. Oh, I think he's got a really good chance if he can get in a runoff. Yeah. Uh, You guys look like you just got back from Watergate. Okay. Miss McIntyre, uh, Mr. Dixon, could we have a meeting with you? Sure. See you later. Okay. Well, what's on your mind? Well, Mr. Dixon, we've been thinking that maybe we went a little overboard on a couple of things. Well, I think so. Yeah, so does everybody else. So the question now is what we should do. I mean, maybe we should just give up and get out. And what would that accomplish? Well, it would avoid a lot of wasted time and effort and money. Yeah, but what would it do? Nothing. That's my point. You already have a campaign organization going, right? It's not like it was, but it's still there. OK. So why not go back to your basic idea, which was to inform the public of your problems? You mean write a whole new platform? You've already got one that expresses your basic idea. Though I must admit it could use a little refining. But we don't want to cop out. Let's call it a compromise. That's what politics is about anyway. So you think there's still a chance? Well, most elections are won or lost in the last 10 days. Thanks, Mr. Okay. Dixon. Thanks, Mr. Dixon. It's a mess. It took the letterheads back and tried to put an S on the end of winter, and it didn't work out. So what are you going to do? Mr. Collins going to redo the whole batch. Oh, boy. Are they really rewriting their political platform, or is that just a political rumor? Uh-huh, and when they're finished, they're going to have it printed up and mailed out to all the original contributors. Print it? Mm-hmm. Mr. Collins is a nice man, but I think he's going to be really sorry he got himself into this, especially at wholesale prices. I still think we should have the right to demonstrate, but not during classroom time. There could be an hour a week set aside for that. Well, sounds reasonable. You can do a lot of demonstrating in an hour. Now, on textbooks, do you think if the students were given the right to make recommendations, the school board would listen to them? I think so. It goes for recommendations on teachers, too. Right, that's what we had in mind, sort of a grading system. Well, I'd like an honest appraisal of my work. But an open campus, we still don't think there's anything wrong with that. We're not little kids. I agree. What about attendance? Well, you know, we figured a lot of kids would take advantage if we left it entirely up to them. I know I would. So we decided to make it just for seniors as an extra privilege. And as an extra responsibility. Right. So now you know where we stand. So what do you think, Mr. Dixon? Well, do you want my approval as a teacher? No, we want your reaction as a voter. Well, sounds great. Now all you have to do is sell it to the public. Shoot, Mr. Dixon, if we can sell something to you, we can sell it to anybody. Uh, we're working for the election of Gary Winters to the Board of Education. 
Isn't he that kid with those radical ideas? No, sir, he changed them. You can read about them right here. That's the trouble with young people today. Always changing their minds. Well, at least we're getting enough contributions to pay the phone bill. Great. Look right over there. We finally got the stationery. Oh, no. What's the matter? Nothing. For a long time now, the students of this city have been trying to get their feelings on these subjects heard. Now that we've gained the vote, now that we've gained the right to hold office, we plan to do something about it. So, so when you go to the polls tomorrow, please remember the name Gary Winters. We'd all appreciate your vote. Kiss it. <laughs> Nobody does that anymore. Will you kiss it? <laughs> Good morning. Oh, did you vote yet? Mm -hmm. Yes, we did on the way in. It's exciting, isn't it? First time Whitman's had its own candidate. Hi. Oh, hi. How are hey, you? We wanted to invite y'all to the party tonight. At the campaign headquarters. Later on, after the polls close. We'll be there. Out of sight. How about you, Mr. Kaufman? Oh, I wouldn't miss it. What do you think your candidate's chances are? Oh, he'll be up there. I hope so. Well, he should run third, or maybe we might even get a miracle. Man, would that call for a celebration. Well, don't get your hopes up too high, Jason. No, Mr. Dixon, we're gonna celebrate no matter what. Music and everything. Later. You hang in. They're pretty good kids. Even if they win, I think they'll still let us into school tomorrow. <laughs> Man, I don't believe it. Neither do I. Dead last out of six candidates. One of those guys didn't even bother to campaign. I feel like crying. I just don't believe it. Well, I'm gonna have a piece of cake. Always picks me up when I lose an election. Have a big piece. We're big losers. Man, I just don't believe it. At least Jack Hance got to the runoff with McWilliams. I'm glad for that, Miss McIntyre, but... Got off to a bad start, and you just weren't able to catch up, that's all. But then you put on a good campaign. That's important. I agree. Thanks. Maybe if I talked to you in the beginning, things would have been different. You'll never know. Oh, come on, let's clean up. Anybody want some barbecue ribs? No, I'm not hungry. Hi. Hi. I got a message for you from Jack Hess. He thinks you put on a great campaign, especially the last 10 days. I think you might have opened his eyes up to some issues he never considered before. Did he say that? He also said that he's going to be facing a tough runoff campaign against McWilliams. He'd appreciate your help. He'd like to adopt some of your platform and add it to his own. Just thought I'd pass along the word. Well? well don't underrate your achievement. You did get your views to the public. That's true. And you helped Hess get into the runoff. Yeah, we pulled some votes. I guess you're right, Mr. Dixon. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> I guess it was worth it after all. I think so. Hey, man, you might be this country's next Eugene B. Debs. <laughs> at his headquarters. Well, the latest polls show sure, Jack Gang all the time. I hope it's not one of Ronald's polls. No, he just agrees. Hi. Oh, hi. What's the matter? You get invited to another wedding? No, oh, I wish I had. <laughs> yeah, what's the problem? Well, you know, when you wind up any sort of political campaign, there are always a lot of leftover bills. Always. And that's what happened in Gary's campaign. How much? $73. Don't tell me for what. You guessed it, printing. Well, can't the printer deduct it as a political contribution? Yeah, he could write it off as taxes. He didn't think so. Well, you ought to be able to make some sort of deal with him. Hmm. I got it. 
I'll just promise never to do business with him again. <laughs>